Good evening. I want to do a quick video tonight to talk about uh, something I like to call left pad apocalypse. Uh, I didn't coin that term, but uh, I just want to make this video to talk a little bit about uh, NPM modules and uh, you know whether or not you should uh, you know just liberally just kind of include or install NPM uh, modules into your into your project. So there was an incident that happened uh, a little over five years ago where uh, there was a situation where one party uh, thought they owned the, the name trademark-wise for, uh, for a module that was up on NPM. And that module was called Kick. And the name of the company is Kick. And there was another developer who actually had created a, uh, a module that was using that name. and. They went back and forth. Uh, Kick wanted to get access to that because they own the uh, they own the name, and uh, the developer didn't want to give up access to that. And so what wound up happening was uh, there was a dispute where they went to uh, they went to NPM, the organization, and said, "Hey, look, we, we own the trademark for this name, and we'd like to you know get this back." And so uh, they did. They gave it back. Uh, to uh, to kick so they could have ownership of that uh, NPM module, and the developer who originally authored the the module that was originally in that name uh, was really upset about it, and he unpublished every single module that he had on NPM, and he had over 250 modules uh, that were on NPM, and one of those modules was called Left Pad. And it turned out LeftPad was used in a lot of other projects. And I'm not sure everybody realizes this or not, but when you include a module into your Node project from, from NPM, a lot of times those modules have sub-dependencies. They have modules that they have imported in uh, or installed into their module. And then those modules can have modules that they've installed into their modules. And it just winds up creating this, this large uh, tree structure. And so it turned out a lot of projects like Babel, for example. Babel is a tool that you can use for transpiling or, com or compiling you know, your code into JavaScript code. And uh, when uh, this was unpublished, it broke Babel and it broke a lot of other projects. It literally broke thousands and thousands of projects. And the the statement at the time was that uh, it actually broke the internet. So if you wanted to make a change or deploy a new change using Node and you had a project or a sub-module inside your project that was using LeftPad, you were broken. And it was only down for about two and a half hours, but it made enough of a uh, stink that uh, NPM actually changed some of their policies about uh, unpublishing uh, modules. So I just want to give a kind of quick look and show you kind of like what example of what one of these modules looks like. In this case, I'm actually going to use LeftPad. So let's take a look here. I'm going to go ahead and create a new project here, and I'm going to use a tool I created to do that. And so this is going to be called, we'll call this left pad APOC. And let's uh, CD into that. All right. And I'm going to open up Visual Studio Code here so we can take a look at this. And Visual Studio Code blew up on me. So let's try that again. Okay, that's better. So now that we've done that, uh, we can see right here, I have a uh, blank file here and I have a project. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to open up the terminal here. Let me blow this up a little bit so it's a little bit easier to read. And let's uh, go ahead and install LeftPad. So I'm going to install LeftPad in here. So do that. All I have to do is say LeftPad. And I'm going to save this my project file. And there I've just said, so one thing you'll notice here is that now there's this node modules folder here. And uh, left pads be included in here. So to kind of show you what left pad does, essentially what it does is it just pads to the left side of a string, you know, uh, a certain number of characters. 
So in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say import, and I'm going to say left pad from left pad. And let's go here, we'll do a console.log. And I'm just going to log out JavaScript. All right. Now, if I come over here and I go to run this, we can see here it just prints out JavaScript. But then if I come over here, and I wrap that inside of my left pad function. We can see here that it lets me input a string, but it also gives me two additional parameters. One for the length, how, how big do I want to make this? So let's say I want to make this 20 characters long. I can do that. And you can even give it a character here that you want to pad with. So I'm just going to give it a space. And let's finish that up. Run that. And you can see down here, we've got JavaScript and then we have another JavaScript below it that has, looks like about 10 spaces here. So it, it figured it out that this was 10 already. It added additional 10 uh, spaces into that. And I can change this to a different character if I wanna make this, let's say uh, C and run that. Now I've just added 10 Cs to the beginning of that. So that itself is, uh, I think, uh, okay, but what this module does is actually, uh, it's, it's not a lot. So if we actually take a look at the source code, uh, let me open up this. This is actually what's in left pad. It's uh, not a lot. It's, if you look at this, essentially it's just a function that takes in the parameters that we were showing here. It creates a string, and then it goes through here, it sets up the character, and then uh, based off the length, it sets up the new length, and it just adds that character at the beginning of the string. So, pretty simple. Now, one of the things you have to be aware of, let's say if I want to include another project in here, and let's say that for that project, I want to Let's uh, include Express. So I'm going to go over here, I'm going to say npm install Express. Now it's installing Express. So the thing that's interesting to look at here, so I come here and expand this. Oh, did I do it the wrong place? Hold on a second, let me take a look here. No, let's get it to the right place. Okay, so I did add Express. Let's refresh that. Ah, okay. So here you can see now there's a bunch of modules in here, right? And then if I wanted to, for instance, I can come over here, I can go and open up one of these modules. And we can see here that there are varying levels of, of uh, complexity here. Here's e tag, here's express itself. And if you look in that, you can see that uh, there's also a bunch of dependencies in here. And so, you know, every, de every dependency, uh, every module this needs, it's got to install that module as well. And that's why we see so many different modules inside of here. It's got to install all of those different modules that express needs into this uh, project. So when you do that with any module, let's say you have something that's very simple you need to do. For instance, let's say you needed to do something with a date as an example, uh, and you wanted to, let's say, import you know, moment.js to, let's say, get like a date part. Well, you could do that, but the thing is you may not need to. So uh, let's say you just wanted to get the year off of, uh, off of a date. So you come back in here, and take a look at this. We're going to just open up the REPL here real quick. And let's say uh, I want to get like a, the year off of a date. Well, you can do that very easily in JavaScript. You don't need uh, moment.js to do that. You could use moment.js to do this, but all you have to do is just say new date. 
and we're going to say get year and that returns the year so in that case it looks like it's cropped off here but that the idea here is that you know you don't need to uh, you actually don't need to uh, use a lot of these different modules and you can shut down you can reduce the complexity of your application if you're not having to import all these different uh, different modules so that was basically what I wanted to talk about. I have an accompanying uh, blog post that uh, I did today with this. I'm going to put it in the description. And let me know what you think. Um, and if you like this channel, please, uh, you know, or you like this video, you can give it a thumbs up. If you don't like it, you can give it a thumbs down, but please give it a thumbs up. And then uh, if you'd like to see uh, more videos like this, you know, please subscribe to the channel. It helps the algorithm, and I can make more videos like this. Have a nice day.